Hey guys, we are working on a fun little project today. By we, I primarily mean Nathan. <laughs> uh, so our meat birds that we ordered from Murray McMurray Hatchery are going to get shipped in uh, the first week in March, I believe. We ordered 100 Jumbo Cornish crosses. Uh, we did the unsexed, and so we are trying to prepare um, everything for them. We got our Gallagher fencing in, all the poultry netting, everything we ordered from Gallagher. And so now we're about to find a space. We ran to our co-op and Nathan bought ryegrass and oats. Is that what you said? And so we are going to plant that. And hopefully by the time they're big enough to be moved into the netting, um, they'll have some ryegrass to munch on. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. So we ended up buying, I'm waiting on Nathan for I show you guys the whole setup. Uh, we ended up buying a hundred meat birds. Now some of you guys may be thinking, why on earth did you just buy a hundred meat chickens when you just bought a half a cow, <laughs> an entire hog? Like, why do you need that much meat? That is a very good question. We had actually bought the meat chickens months ago. Uh, we had planned to do meat birds this spring. We had bought them before the opportunity came up to buy that beef and we had also been looking for beef. So we did not want to pass up that opportunity. So now we're kind of in this place where we're like, oh my gosh, 100 meat birds, that's a lot. Like what are we gonna do with 100 meat birds? So we have uh, some friends of ours who have claimed some of them. Uh, so we're gonna just raise them out and then some of them they will have. And instead of having 100 whole chickens, which would take up a lot of freezer space that we do not have, uh, there is a butcher a couple hours from us that will actually, you take the live birds too, uh, they do the butchering and they turn it into chicken breasts, thighs, legs, quarters, everything you can think of, which we will probably consume. Um, faster than we would a whole bird. It also will not take up near as much freezer space as having, you know, 50 whole chickens in there. So that is our plan. Um, I mean, I'm not complaining being, you know, in just the day and age we are, I'm not gonna be upset for having too much protein um, versus the opposite end of that of us like not having enough and having a hard time sourcing it out. Plus this will be the first time we've done meat chickens on this property. We did have some meat birds um, when we lived in Greenbrier. Not very many, we never like had them in the netting. They were just kind of in our chicken coop area with our laying hen. So we definitely didn't do it, uh, you know, the right way or the way you're supposed to raise out meat birds. So Nathan and I are actually really excited about this process. We've never done it before. Um, and so I think it's just gonna be a really good learning experience for the both of us. And we're actually pretty excited about it. June, you gonna come help us? <laughs> While Nathan is working on some of uh, the stuff for the chickens real quick, I wanted to show you all this because I got asked uh, throughout the snowstorm, oh my gosh, did your stuff make it that you had out in the garden? Which I had the onions that I planted, the garlic, I still had those cabbages, I had some Brussels sprouts that were still in the garden left uncovered. I'm gonna tell you guys, I mean, there was like over a foot of snow on this garden for a hot minute, uh, like over a week. And I had almost come to terms that, you know, well, I may just have to order some more onions, but check this out. They took very little damage. The tops of them, as you can see, are kind of puny, but I honestly think that they are going to be fine. Um, I think the benefit of having planted them uh, early like I did is actually gonna be like my saving grace here. So the tops had some damage, but I'm still holding out that they're gonna, you see that June? To get in there, that they're gonna be fine, so. <laughs> Fingers crossed on that. I wanted to show y'all my collards too. I mean, look at this. Like, this is still edible. My kale actually doesn't look bad either. I mean, this is wild. I mean, look at that. That's actually pretty good. Now, my dino kale, it did not appreciate that. Um, I'll probably just feed these to the chickens or the rabbits. Um, all my mustard greens in this kale. What you think, June? But yeah, I mean, my onions, I'm feeling, these are kind of puny. These are kind of puny when I put them in, but feeling pretty good about that. My Brussels sprouts I checked are doing great. My cabbages withstood some damage. You guys can see there's some damage in there. So I may not be able to salvage these. But if anything, we can eat the leaves off of them. Uh, these onions, which were a bit more established, they were the bigger ones, as you guys can see. They just look good. I'm feeling good about this, y'all. No, 
I'll show you guys the Brussels sprouts. They seem to have taken honestly no damage. I mean, these look totally fine. This plant over here also looks really good. We will be having Brussels sprouts for dinner. Y'all, I am so stinking impressed. So, so happy. This was like the best outcome that could have possibly happened. So I am really, really pleased that not all was lost, not all is wasted. <laughs> so let's get back to getting stuff ready for the meat birds. Come on. What's your brick? There you go. Okay, so all, are the meat birds going over there at first? Yeah, so we're gonna move them. Right. Essentially, four stations, just rotate them. Okay, which will be good because this is gonna be where our in-ground garden is as well in these different stations. So they're just gonna add compost, dig it all up. You guys know the whole system is just super, super beneficial. So I did wanna ask, because this is something I don't even know, you bought, you said, ryegrass and oats. Yeah, I bought annual ryegrass and just regular feed oats. Okay. Um, it should, it'll be a month before we put them on here. Right. You know, or at least three weeks, uh, depending on how fast they grow. So that'll give this, you know, at least a month to grow and that'll just give them something to graze on. So I did have a question, is there a reason that you chose the rye and the oats? Are there different options? Did you like, is there more protein in those? Or what was your logic? It's about the only thing that'll grow this time of year. Okay. You know, okay. I could have gotten some wheat seed, um, you know, but. Hairy vetch is a really good cover crop. I don't know if you can plant in the dead of the winter. That would be. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. These are just really available this time of year. Yeah, we also okay. have some Austrian winter peas. Um, you know, I may throw some Austrian winter peas out as well. You know, essentially, they're going to get up this tall and get eaten off, you know. So. Right. so I wanted to talk about this too because you guys know when I talked about uh, the beef, we wanted our beef to be grass-fed, grass-finished. There is nothing wrong with finishing on grain. That's really common. Like, there is... There is no, we have no problem with that. It's just if we can get access to grass fed, grass finished when it comes to our beef, that's what we prefer. Um, and so Nathan and I were talking about this and he was like, Jill, you know that like these chickens are gonna be grain fed. And I really wanted to talk about that because this is our option. We are choosing to uh, raise them you know, in March, which it's not quite spring here. We may potentially have another round of winter weather that we talked about right now. It's fake spring. It's 62 degrees and feels amazing. Um, but, you know, right now we are gonna grow that, but like Nathan said, it's not gonna be very big. So we are gonna have to feed them grain, a good quality grain. And I just want you guys to know, we're not just sold to it has to be grass fed, grass finished. You know, we are huge proponents in growing your own protein, being sustainable, feeling good about that. And I know that that looks different in different stages. And so for us, I wanted to be completely transparent with you guys. You know, we would love to be able to just graze them on grass. However, we have them in March and our grass is dead. Like grass isn't growing right now. And so I just want to encourage you guys, you know, even financially, we could not buy grass fed anything for a really, really long time. It is just way more expensive. So it took us, you know, several seasons of just doing what was in the budget and that's okay and feeling good about that. And so I want to send some encouragement to you guys. If you're not buying grass fed or raising grass fed and you're doing grain and you feel good about it, that's okay. Figure out what you feel good about. No, there is no right or wrong reason. We're even in a situation where, you know, we really want to raise our own meat birds. And that looks like, you know, planting some stuff, but primarily them being raised on grain. And that's something we can feel good about. We can pick out, you know, the quality uh, feed and grain we want to supply them with. And just, just know there is no right or wrong reason with this. If you're making a step towards sustainability, I think you're doing well. And that's worth celebrating. Uh, so your plan today is what? I'm just going to plant this whole area. Okay. Um, and then we'll set up the uh, electric netting. Are we gonna we'll, do that today? No. No, okay. <laughs> Later. <laughs> okay. But step one. Step one, well, let's do it. You ready? Yeah, let's okay. do it.
Nathan was mentioning to me how the ryegrass and the oats actually uh, grow, which I thought was really interesting because it is different than just regular grass. So I thought it'd be cool if you just kind of explain that to you guys as well. So annual ryegrass um, does not grow like a crazy root system. Um, so one seed of ryegrass is one blade of grass. So you need to you need to spread it pretty thick. So uh, in this video, you'll see I tried to the best I could spread it as thick as I could with the help of a, a toddler. But, yeah, uh, but that is interesting because you know a lot of people may not know that. And when you're say you're doing this or you think about doing this for your you know chickens that you're going to be grazing and something like that, it is good to know uh, because that is something I didn't know. I was like, all right, how do we you know sow this thin? Do we sow it thick? What does that look like? And when he exp explained to me that you know it just you know produces one blade of grass, I was like, oh well, that kind of tells me real quickly how much we need uh, to sow. And I just thought that was actually a pretty cool. Point. Yeah, and it, it's uh, both that and the oats are are annual, so they won't come back next year. Yeah, um, so you just have to replant. Had to replant uh, if we're here. So yeah, so that's what we got done today. <laughs> Maybe uh, over the weekend we can get the netting set up, and when we get the birds in, we'll let you know. Uh, we'll kind of show you guys what that looks like. The plan is right now. What is the plan? What is the plan? <laughs> I am so over having baby chicks in my house. We do this every spring. I've got a plan. You have a plan? What's yeah. your plan? Okay. So remember Nathan was figuring out the inside of the chicken coop for the rabbits? We may we have an area in there that actually we're moving the baby bunnies to during the day for a little bit and then moving them back with mom. Um, and so... We will probably keep them in the house though for couple days especially um, if we have that winter weather that they are saying you know and it's that cold again like it was there's no way we would put them outside so right now we're kind of just yeah figuring out the weather um but yeah they will either be in the chicken coop uh, with some extra light and heat we've got ele house. we've got electricity in there so we can plug in yeah. heat lamp um you know i'll have to cover the bottom so it's not as drafty yeah. but we've we've got somewhat of a plan in place somewhat. i just hadn't let her in on it yet hey that's okay because usually the plan changes either i make a plan and it changes or you make a plan and it changes <laughs> that's gross <laughs> june are you having fun outside yeah. are you having fun you're making a mess <laughs> well thank you guys for hanging out with us we are super excited to kind of dive into this adventure share with you guys what that looks like how we've uh what we learned through that process as well but thanks for hanging out with us we'll talk to you soon bye guys say bye Ha <laughs> ha.